What's up guys? For the last 10 years, I have researched, analyzed, and studied every aspect of building a perfect credit score, finally to the point where I could brag on YouTube about having an 800 score, which is what most people consider to be perfect. Good news is, I'm gonna share it with you completely free. All I ask in return is you smash that subscribe button if you wanna be smarter with your money and raise your credit score. For starters, in order to understand how to actually achieve a perfect credit score, you have to understand how the credit scoring system works in the first place. Just like going to school and getting homework, quizzes, and take home tests, every part of a credit scoring model comes into consideration. And if you wanna be a part of the 800 credit score club, then you need to do well in each part of the credit scoring model. The first and most important factor is on-time payment history, making up 35% of your score. All this means is the amount of times you had on-time payments and that you were paying your account as agreed without ever being late, falling behind, or completely negating the account as a whole. If you do happen to miss a payment, it's going to stay as a negative mark on your report for up to seven years, which can be extremely devastating. Good news is in order to make an on-time payment, you really only have to make the minimum, which could be anywhere from $25 to $100, depending on your credit card. So even if times get tough and you wanna keep your account in good standing, you really only have to pay the minimum payment. And no, I'm not telling you to make the minimum payment if you have more money in the bank. What I'm saying is if you find yourself in some sort of bind, making the minimum payment is going to satisfy and count as an on-time payment, so you don't have to miss it and get a negative mark on your report. Second largest impact, making up 30% of your score, is your credit utilization, aka how much you're spending versus what the bank is actually offering you on your credit line. Pretty simple here, if you max out your credit card, your credit utilization is going to go up, which is going to bring down your score. On the other end, if you're not spending much of your limit, then your credit score is generally gonna stay higher. Now, it's very important to note, it's not the actual dollar amount you're spending, but more about the actual percentage. Let's use an example. I have $10,000 on my credit card, and I spend, let's say, $1,000. I now have a 10% overall credit utilization. For someone else, the $1,000 may be their full credit limit, which would equal to be 100% of their overall credit utilization, which would not be good. Easy way to solve this is to have a lot of available credit, which I'll dive deeper later on in this video, but for now, just remember it makes up 30% of your overall score. Third, we have average age of accounts, which makes up 15% of your overall credit score. Typically, lenders like to see an established age of accounts, and keep in mind, this is an average of all of your accounts. So for example, let's say I open up an account today, and it's going to be a brand new card, but I had a previous card open for the past 10 years. You do the 10 years divided by today, which would be five years of average age of account. In the same way, if I didn't open up the card today, then my average age of accounts would be for the one card, which would be 10 years. This one's sort of tricky to control because we don't want to stop getting cards and accounts, but we also want to monitor and optimize this feature. Simple recommendation here is to open up accounts and keep them open the whole time so you have a solid foundation and opening up a new card in the future is going to have a small impact on your score. And fourth, we have types of credit that you have, which makes up 10% of your overall score. All this means is that lenders want to see that you're responsible handling different types of accounts. For example, if you have a student loan, if you have a car loan, if you have a credit card, these are all considered different types of accounts. They just want to see you're responsible handling different types. This is one of those ones that are sort of counterintuitive because having more types of accounts is going to ultimately help your score. But when you go to get a bank loan or a credit card, they don't want to see you much in debt and they don't wanna see a ton of accounts. So we'll dive deeper into this later in the video. And finally, we have the remaining 10%, which is the amount of hard inquiries on your report, AKA how many times someone pulls your credit report when you apply for a loan or credit card. Anytime you apply for one, basically a strike on your credit report, it's gonna stay for around two to three years, basically just signaling another bank or anyone else that looks at your report, even yourself, that you applied for a credit card at that date. The trick here is to make sure you're spacing them out three to six months in between or even longer if you can because you don't want to show the banks that you're ultimately desperate. It's like asking a girl out of the bar. You don't want to show her friends that you asked everyone in her friend group because the chances of you scoring a date with her are going to go down drastically. I'm talking from experience. But we can't stop there because now I'm going to share some strategies to instantly boost your score to 800. But first you need to know where to check and view your credit reports. 
sign up for free at either Credit Karma or annualcreditreport.com. I typically like to use Credit Karma if you're looking at your score for the first time because annualcreditreport.com is not going to show your credit score and only going to give you a list of your accounts. They're both completely free and will give you a general idea of where you stand. Now that you have your reports, you could review them and see what needs to be improved. Typically, it's gonna be one of these five things. First is if you don't have enough credit, if you're relatively new to all of this, and you barely had any time to open up a credit card or make on-time payments, most likely your score is not high enough because you haven't had enough time to build it up. If that's the case, I'll go over what you could do to fix this very shortly. Second, maybe you got a late payment or two or three, maybe even four, geez, I hope not. Um, but like I mentioned before, that's gonna stay in your report for a whopping seven years, and that's a lot of bad luck in credit score time, but thankfully there are some solutions that I'll cover in a minute that you could do to improve this. Third, you should check to see if you have any accounts and collections. If you do, I'm not going to lie, that's a pretty bad, but at least you'll be aware of this. So what happens is if you're late on a payment, usually 180 days or more, the lender will basically give up on trying to recuperate their investment. They'll call the whole thing a loss, throw it out, but they're going to hire a debt company, which is a third party collection agency who calls you up nonstop when you're at work and they try to get you to fork over some sort of money. Good news is they try to settle for pennies on the dollar. So hopefully you'll be able to settle this with some strategies I share with you towards the end of this video. But for now, the fourth thing is you should check to see if you have any high balances. Basically check your accounts, make sure nothing is maxed out. If it is, you're probably gonna regret ever going out to that fancy dinner with your family, but at least you know where you stand. Typically you don't wanna have them maxed out, just like that credit utilization I shared, with you, you want to make sure you're under 30%. And fifth, check to see if there are any foreclosures or bankruptcies on your credit report. This one I would hope is not a surprise, but if anything like this is on your report, you want to make sure you're checking to see if it's on there for longer than it's supposed to be, or if it's just straight up misinformation like your identity was stolen without even you knowing it. So you could see exactly what's impacting your score. Hopefully you're able to figure it out and best of luck with that. And now I'm gonna share some things that you could generally do to improve this immediately. If you don't have enough money and you don't have enough credit, one of the biggest life hacks is to add what's called an authorized user. Basically when someone else with an extensive credit history adds you as an authorized user to their credit card, all their credit history shows up on your credit report, also known as credit piggybacking because you can get the benefits of someone else's score without doing all the hard work yourself. There are a few catches and things to be aware of, so make sure you listen up. Because you know what they say, if it's too good to be true, it probably is, except for the offer in the pinned comment below, which is going to allow me to evaluate your credit, look for any errors, and do all this for you for free. The only catch is there's limited spots because I can't get on the phone with everyone. So if you're serious about improving your score, simply click the link in the pinned comment below and book a call with me. Anyway, the first catch to adding an authorized user is that some credit reporting companies are catching on to this. And because of that, the credit history is not going to transfer over on all three credit bureaus. As of right now, it appears Capital One, Discover, Wells Fargo, and Bank of America will report past credit history. Other credit cards, not so much. Much, they're only going to begin reporting at the time you got added as an authorized user, which kind of defeats the purpose at that point, but it could still help out because it adds a positive trade line on your report, which is going to show positive payments moving forward. Now keep in mind, this is not a substitute to you getting a credit card on your own, but it can be used as kind of like a crutch to elevate you to the next level. And the second catch is because you're going to inherit all of their credit history at once, this also includes any late payments, any delinquencies, and any negative marks. So you really need to make sure that the person who's adding you has at least three to five years of credit history and they're a trustworthy person. Now the second hack to increasing your score instantly is going to be paying down your balances to your credit utilization is under 10%. Uh, for most people, this is going to have a gigantic impact on your credit score in the quickest amount of time. Just remember, the amount you owe is your credit utilization rate and it makes up 30% of your score. So if you keep a high balance, it's going to bring it down, which is why I recommend using these two methods. First way is to pay down your balance. And once this happens, a higher credit score is reflected on your report in 14 to 30 days. The second, and yes, 
I know this is gonna sound counterintuitive, but if you have an account balance and you can't pay it down in full or get it down enough to increase your score, sometimes it actually helps to open up another credit card or increase your credit limit. But that's because as I mentioned earlier, your credit utilization is based on your total credit line, meaning if you have $5,000 of your credit available and you're spending $5,000, that's 100% of your credit utilization, which is a big no-no. But if you open up a new credit line and now you have $10,000 available, spending the same five grand is only 50% of your overall utilization. Not as good, but it's not technically horrible because 50% beats 100% of utilizing all your credit. This is why I always recommend opening up as many cards as possible, not at once, and making sure there are no annual fee cards meaning they're not charging you anything to have them open. So in the long run, you have a lot of credit available. And if you choose to go to a nice dinner or for me to buy a new pair of nice running shoes, it's not going to totally throw off my whole credit score because my credit utilization will not be impacted greatly. And please, if you're someone who struggles with managing their money and thinks you're going to go to the strip club and spend all of your money on your credit card, then please don't request new credit increases and please don't open up more credit cards, but you can use this next hack I'm gonna share to instantly increase your credit score. Now, the third method you could use to increase your score is sort of a new method. It's called Experian Boost and here's what it does. When calculating your credit score, a large portion of this is analyzed by the number of on-time payments, uh, your total credit history, and types of loans that you've been given. But obviously, that requires you to open up multiple credit cards and pay them off in a quick amount of time, which most people don't have the money to do. So a new credit scoring model that Experian Boost came out with would aim to fix that and most of you would be able to qualify. Now, none of this is sponsored by Experian, but it's a completely free app, which basically it lets you report your utilities, Netflix, any monthly subscriptions you have to the credit bureaus, which will ultimately increase your score because it's going to give you more on-time payments and a positive trade line on your report. And no, don't do this if you've missed a ton of payments because it's going to most likely report those, but but if you're someone who typically pays on time, which if you're watching this, I hope that you do, I would definitely recommend taking advantage of this new feature. Now, the fourth thing you could do has to do with late payments. Basically, you could have the late payments and delinquencies removed from your credit report because if you have those late payments on your report, then you're most likely destroying your score and they're going to stay for that seven years on your report and they won't just go away on your own, which is why I always recommend to challenge them. You're able to dispute these late payments and hopefully have them removed from your report. If they're inaccurate, chances are you could attack those inaccuracies and have them removed from your report. This is something you could completely do for free by going online or sending in physical letters to the credit bureaus. I'm running out of breath here, but one thing to note is you should never lie. So you never wanna dispute something that you know is completely accurate. But what I'm trying to say here is that most credit reports have some sort of inaccuracy on them. So you typically wanna find that and attack that and hopefully you get the late payment removed from your report and it's going to increase your credit score. If you've done any of this and had success with it, please drop me a comment below so I could make sure that people are watching up to this point in the video. Now we can't stop there because the next thing I'm gonna share with you is going to be the difference of someone who finally gets the 800 credit score or someone who's stuck in the six or 700s, which is why we're gonna talk about closing old accounts, which is probably the biggest mistake that I see all the time. And you should never be closing any of your old accounts because your credit score is calculated by that average age of account history, and it often starts from your very first credit card. For me, it was the Discover It when I was in high school and I was on my way to college. That was the first credit card I got. Thankfully, it's still open. Uh, what I recommend here to prevent it being closed, because most credit cards will be closed, in six months of not using them. I typically like to put the gym membership for LA Fitness on it, so I'm keeping it open. Just remember to always pay it because typically this card's going to be in someone's draw and they're gonna forget about it, so make sure to have automatic payments on there. But keep in mind, you should not be closing any accounts if it's an account that has an annual fee or fees that you're paying for and you don't feel comfortable. I don't blame you, you wanna consider downgrading the credit card. By downgrading the card, you still keep the account on your credit report. The only thing that actually changes is the physical card and you're going to maintain the high average age of account. Finally, after watching this video, you're finally geared to getting a perfect credit score without making any of the most common mistakes and you're going to be able to get the best interest rates 
whether your credit score is 780 or 850, you are typically going to be given the best rates and you're going to be able to leverage your money to start that dream business or buy that dream house. And please, if you like this video and you want to be smarter with your money and raise your credit score, consider subscribing to this channel and checking out this video, which is going to share the best beginner credit cards that you can get today. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Peace.